Kagome walked inside like it was her house, took off her shoes, and paying no attention to me, proceeded to the kitchen. Please, make yourself at home. What's mine is yours. I grumbled. In the kitchen, she opened the fridge, still looking like she owned the place, and spent some time checking its contents. Do have yourself a second butter sandwich. I'm not counting. What was that? Nothing. Someone who works in food service. I feel genuinely sorry for you. What do you want to talk about? I asked, not hiding my irritation. It's about your father, don't worry. I remember and intend to keep my promise to help. As if you wouldn't. That's not why I'm here. Then why? I wanted to thank you. Now that's unexpected. I dramatically flung my arms up in the air. To what do I owe such an honor? If you hadn't provoked that conflict, my problem probably would have never been resolved. That conflict? You're talking about Kawashima and Asakura? Yes. What about them? Everything's fine now. I handled it. Ooh. 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 <laughs> hmm. I don't like what you're getting at with that. You handled it? How? Doesn't matter. Just curious. You came just to tell me that? Without any details? That's all a phone call would do. Isn't it nicer to receive gratitude personally? From someone else, maybe. Ah, <laughs> so am I not good enough for you? Finally, Kagome was her indignant self again. And say that. But for some reason, it just feels like there's a catch here. You're not telling me where you were today, so why should I? She frowned and turned away. Well, maybe it's because it's not me who came to your place and started interrogating you about your day. I see. It was stupid to even think that you... She suddenly went silent. That I what? Nothing. Kagome stomped her foot and apparently prepared to leave. Fine, wait. Yes, I was with Ellie. We've been... Rehearsing. She merely stopped and looked at me puzzled. Rehearsing what? Music. I agreed to replace the bassist in their group. For a moment, her face showed the signs of intense thought. That's good. Good? I asked with surprise. So you're not going to complain about it? Why would I? I was the one who told you to become closer with Kobayashi. I'd rather be closer than playing in the same band. I just don't think I did it for you. I really like their music and... Oh, don't look for excuses, for God's sake. I care about the end result, not your motivation. Really now, why did I say that? As if I'd done something wrong. And Dave even surprise you that she chose you and not someone else. I mean, there just wasn't anyone else to ask. I replied unsurely. You know, I don't know anything about music. Sometimes it seems like every second person in Tokyo can play the guitar. Even if they can't, they'd learn for the air of Kobayashi Corporation. Excuse me of ulterior motives all you like, I don't care. I don't care. He only mocked me and laughed. Glad you're having fun. If that's it, are you kicking me out? You're trying to provoke me? Kikomi seemed to be asking for a fight. The feeling that she was hiding something grew stronger. I guess I really should have just called. Or even said nothing. People like you don't deserve gratitude. And this aggression of hers. Sure, you could never accuse her of being excessively patient, but today she was particularly riled up. Jesus, you're a schizo. Go see a doctor. I will, as soon as I find my father. She barked out and left. When the door closed, I sat in the chair thinking. So she came to thank me. She handled Kawashima and Asakura. In the end, our conversation had concluded as usual. I had zero idea what she was, what was going. I had zero idea what was going on, and the more I tried to understand, the more confused I was getting. A novel's protagonist is usually introduced to us in the first few pages, and then, as a general rule, we learn about their past. I knew some things about Catherine's childhood, could easily imagine Ellie before I'd met her, but to me, Kagome had only started existing two weeks ago. Had she had any friends in primary school? Had she ever fallen in love? What was her favorite anime? She was so good at distancing herself from other people that even in her own novel, she was a secondary character. In the end, I gave up on this line of thought and went to learn the new songs I'd been given. The music was a good way to distract myself and clean my head. Did you mean clear? <laughs> I think clear your head's the expression, not clean, but okay. Maybe when, when, and if I became a professional and learned to play on autopilot, I'd be able to think about something else at the same time. But for now, the bass demanded my utmost concentration. I finished long past midnight, completely exhausted but satisfied with myself.
I was really enthusiastic about the start of a week. I was only 18, and as such, hadn't yet felt the inexorable passing of time. The end of one set of seven days, the beginning of another, felt like turning over to another line page in a thick notebook. No matter how many times I did it, the end was nowhere near. Except there was no erasing the things written on previous pages. There was one good thing, though. Today I could see Ellie again. With that in mind, I quickly got up, washed myself, and had a quick breakfast, and went to school. You're early today. Kyosuke noted with surprise. You too. How's your weekend? I wondered how he'd react if he found out that Ellie and I were playing in the same band now. The thought made me smile like an idiot. They wouldn't kick me out before I could tell him, would they? Much better than mine, I see. Kyosuke muttered sadly inside. Can't complain, but I'll let it stay a secret for now. Trying to maximize the element of surprise. I'd rather not attract too much attention ahead of time. Attract attention? You've got my curiosity. He's about to say something else, but the appearance of the principal, who suddenly entered the classroom, didn't let him. Serve your first class, the whole school is to meet in the yard. Has something happened? One of the girls asked anxiously. Oh, this is about Kashima Nasukura. You'll learn everything there. But Kiyama sensei's his face, it was clear he wasn't going to talk about a school trip. I suddenly felt a sinking feeling in my stomach. What do you think is on his mind? Kesuke giggled conspiratorially and elbowed my side. Things related to your little secret? What if they were going to say that somebody poured shit all over the principal's office? I swear, what I smelled when I was passing by this morning. We should calm down already. Fifteen minutes later, the entire school had gathered in the yard. The principal walked up to a podium that had been brought from somewhere, looked over the crowd, coughed a few times, and began. This morning I bring you terrible news. Yesterday, several students of our school tragically died. Kagome burned their house down, didn't they? More precisely, they were brutally murdered. Horribly, with exceptional cruelty. Jesus fucking Christ! Yama since I wasn't holding back and clearly wasn't reading from a script. By the moment he started to speak, the yard was plunged in complete silence, replacing the students' usual whispers and giggles. I could not find any excuse for whoever could do something like this. But be assured, and I'll see to it personally, that the culprits will be found and punished according to the strictest standards of the law. He paused again and looked over the crowd, not holding his gaze on anyone in particular. I was naturally shocked, but didn't yet know how it would feel. When you're told the plane you just missed has crashed, your first thought is, I'm glad I was late. Objectively, you don't feel as strongly about strangers dying as you do people you know. And who were those kids to me? We stayed at the same school, with hundreds of people, and the principal started reading out the names. Asakura. Kawashima. Terror paralyzed my whole body. My heart seemed to have stopped beating. After a couple of seconds, I managed to force myself to slowly turn my head in search of Kagome. Everything's fine now. I handled it. Her words sounded strange to me yesterday, but I couldn't even imagine then that. Kagome was staying not too far away and didn't look particularly shocked. Of course, there was clear surprise on her face, but no more than on the others. Meanwhile, the principal kept talking. We're entering an age of stability, prosperity, and order. The Japanese nation will not tolerate scum who prey upon what we hold most dear. Our future, our children. Kawashima, Asakura, those thugs too. So Kagome didn't do it, right? But she framed them, much like she framed them previously, but she framed them to look like the ones who did do something, and I'm guessing to uh, Kobayashi, to Kob the Kobayashis in some way, as to where they ended up like that. The woman might be good with a kitchen knife, but it was hard for me to imagine her taking out one person, let alone eight. Eight! Oh damn, they, heal, they killed the whole gang. Not even just those two, but I'm guessing also the guys that are picking on her too. Like, just that whole group got murked, huh? It was a setup for sure. She ain't do it, but she set them up knowing what would happen for sure. If not for what she had said yesterday, would I be suspicious of her now? After all, the victims were far from angels. I'm sure they weren't on the best terms, and to various degrees with plenty of people. The reputation of our school as an education institution of the highest standard that prioritizes not only knowledge, but also the safety of its students. Even the most tragic memorial has to end in time, or it risks turning into a boring sermon. Nick! Nick! Kyosuke sitting next to me had been trying to attract my attention for a while already. What? Kashima, Asakura, 
Don't you think that's strange? Why? They're connected to Iwamura. Do I look like Commissaire My Migret? Migre? Mare? Is it, I'm guessing that's some kind of French word name. Mare? Do I look like Commissaire Mare to you? I barked at him, but a bit louder than I wanted to. A few schoolgirls turned to us and stared at us with suspicion for a moment. I ask for your understanding as an investigation is conducted at our school. I also ask for your assistance. May the officers have any questions. I looked at Kagome again, but she didn't show much of a reaction to Kiyama since his words. She just kept standing there with the appropriately surprised look on her face. On the other hand, what, was she supposed to be smirking or going into hysterics? Either extreme would be more suspicious than her current behavior. Still, I couldn't shake off the thought that she had a motive. And even if it was unlikely, she would come to me to brag. First she killed eight people in cold blood, then, apparently, washed up, changed her clothes, had dinner, and... traveled to the other side of the city to tell a classmate she dealt with them? Without even specifying how? Considering only the facts I had, the situation looked absolutely absurd. No, not the unfortunate deaths, but the fact that I was standing here and seriously blaming Kagome for it. You know what? <laughs> when Ellie got kidnapped last time around, you were like, no, nah, 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 just, like, what? I can't seriously accuse Kagome of this. And then she did it. <laughs> and then she did it. So, um... You know, you can be like, I can't seriously be accusing Kagome of this. The more you try to deny it, the more suspicious I am. Because <laughs> that's typically par for the course. We shall not count out to these bastards and surrender to fear. Therefore, I have no intention of making any changes to the school's schedule. However, all students are to leave the school premises by 6 o'clock. The place and the date of the memorial service will be announced separately. And for now... He stopped and sighed heavily. I ask you all re to return to your classrooms and continue studying. I'm sure that's what your friends would have wanted. Right. Just imagine Asakura poring over textbooks. Although, speak no ill of the dead, right? Jesus Christ. God damn. <laughs> That, that was like the most 0 to 100 this could have fucking gone. It was like, oh yeah, we're just chilling. We're rehearsing with Ellie's band. It's all nice. Eight people are dead. Like, fuck, dude. Fuck, dude. Like, you know, with Himitsu's route, there's like the shootout between, you know, the Russian, not the, yeah, the Russians and the Japanese. They had their whole shootout, you know, in Catherine's route, you had, you know, Ryunosuke popping some guy, you had, you know, the Kobayashi hitman, you had Michael's weird ass, <laughs> you know, there, there was, there was some, uh, there was some bloodshed, for sure, but, hey, eight of your classmates, the bully, <laughs> being Iwamore's bullies, <laughs> were bullies brutally murdered you even say that they were there they had been they had died tragically or they were tragically murdered. brutal he specifically used the word brutal man said they were brutally murdered oh my god dude <laughs> the students started to disperse the majority of them were quiet and only a few exchanged brief phrases mostly in whispers let's go nick go first i'll catch up because he looked at me in understanding and returned to school without arguing I, on the other hand, had to talk to Kagome. I had to do it as soon as possible. But Ellie was faster than me. Sure, I lunged at Iwamura. You bitch, you killed my friends! They were crazy, but I couldn't even imagine how. And if someone else had been in her place, I think a fight would have broken out. Girls, step away. The students still in the yard were observing the arising conflict with interest. No way. Let everyone know what she's done. Let's step away. I repeated insistently, grabbed both of them by the hands and dragged them aside. Let me go. I refuse to listen to another sob story. Doesn't matter if they're guilty or not. A couple of insults don't justify murder. A couple of insults. Kagome smirked. See? She's not even denying it. Ellie, calm down. Think about it. How could Kagome alone eight people? I was picking my words carefully. It told you she was alone. Sure. I'm the one with an army of bodyguards. She continued with an inappropriate irony. And you should watch what you say. Alright, you'll put me behind bars. 
I'm not a policeman. The police will quickly figure out that you weren't on the best of terms with them. I was on no terms with any of them. Why would you raise needless suspicion? Just you wait. The police will start out. If they don't, we'll help them. Is that a threat? Exactly! I'm looking forward to it. Kiyomi was, really was acting weirdly. Once trapped, you fight. There's something else to her behavior. Happiness, delight, or... Pride? Like a criminal taken to her execution, a desire to spit in the face of her torturers one last time. Sometimes it's better to keep your mouth shut. I was the one who started this. Kiyomi replied, deliberately ignoring Ellie. A few days in a cell wipe that nasty smirk off your face. I think, uh, you get a few more than just a few days in a cell when you are responsible for the murder of eight people. This conversation had to end, one way or another. Let's not accuse anybody prematurely. Now, I can't believe you're protecting her. Even if I was, I didn't mean to. I just couldn't wrap my mind around the idea that she could kill eight people in a single night. And unlike Ellie, I was more concerned with the technical aspect of the matter than the moral one. Kiyomi obviously had a motive, but if every bullied teenager took out their tormentors in cold blood, our schools would be drowning in red. You can think whatever you want about Yomura, but just look at her. Did she look like a maniac to you? Ellie pursed her lips and looked away. Doesn't matter. Cross cut. I had no enemies. Oh yeah, sure. Kiyomi kept sneering. Stop it already. You were the one who told me yesterday that you handled them. It just slipped out. Her behavior wasn't just weird, it was provocative. What? I started to back up. And you just can't keep your mouth shut. What were we going to do? Hide it from the police too? You don't need to tell me exactly what you meant when you said you handled whatever it was. You can't hide it from them. Her expression changed. Do you really believe that I could... That I'm capable of it? Yes, I'm not upset by what happened to them. What, am I supposed to spend the entire time in tears to avoid suspicion? No, but at least behave more appropriately. Appropriately to what? She broke into a shout. Your expectations? I don't give a damn. You know, I think I'd rather speak to the police if they got any questions for me. Oh no, you wait. Oh no, you wait. What do you mean you handled them? Stay away or you'll regret it. Kiyomi swung at her, mostly just as a threat, but I still pulled Ellie to me abruptly and she ended in my arms. Yomura quickly returned to the school. Nick, I'm scared. I'm afraid to even be near her. I didn't know what to say. For a while, we stood there silently. I was holding Ellie in a firm hug while she kept her head on my chest. Finally, it was time to come back to reality. I'm not justifying Yomura's actions, but... But what? There's a lot to criticize Kigome for, but she wasn't stupid, and I had to understand that soon enough, Ellie wouldn't be the only person to suspect her. In that case, her behavior seemed even weirder. Do you really think she could kill eight people on her own? I don't know what to think. But who else? What's more in a single night? Yes, that was important. If it were a serial killer, they'd much rather be killing their victims one after another, but not all at once. So there had to be a connection, something to tie all eight of them together. They'd been in the same friend group, that was clear, but apart from that, nothing else came to mind. You know, knew them better. I'm not saying they were the best of people, but how do you do something like this? Who could possibly... Ellie burst into tears, and I had to hug her again to somehow pacify her. There, there. I'm sure the police will find the murderer in no time. I hope so. It's really hard for me to see you protecting Iomara because... She went silent for a long while, as if she never planned to finish the phrase. Just don't do it anymore. Will you promise? I'm not protecting Iomara. I'm trying to think logically. I don't want logic. I know it's her fault. Even if she didn't kill them herself. Yeah, that's kind of the boat I'm in. She's definitely the one responsible, but she's not like the one who actually fucking carried it out. Ellie, but... Because before she hit Miku, everything had been fine. And before... The sort of emotional fatalism was outright alien to me. When events, oftentimes insignificant ones, are given importance great enough to change people's fates. But it wasn't prudent to tell Ellie that. Class is about to start. I mean, we need to live on somehow. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. She replied quietly, wiped her tears, and stepped away from me. But be sure, I'll do everything so that killer, whoever they are, gets what they deserve. I wouldn't expect any less of you. Kigome was in the classroom. Her desk was empty. Well, no wonder. I'd returned the night before... I'd returned the night. I'd returned right before the bell rang, and I was on tenterhooks the entire class. But at least I had an opportunity to think everything through. 
What if the corporation was somehow involved in this too? That's what I'm thinking. Kagome, you know, fucking deceive the corporation into doing some crazy shit. Why would Kobayashi Jun kill children who were clearly not a threat to him? Kiyosuke approached me as soon as break started and Michael followed. Nick, I saw you talking with Ali Salman and Iwamara from the window. I decided I'd better not get involved. Thanks for that. So, do you think that Iwamara did it? I rolled my eyes in anguish. How do you think could a little girl take down eight people, including a few decently strong guys? But then what were you talking about? Especially with Ali Salman. Ellie, Ellie, what does she have to do with anything? But Nick, you can't deny that Asuka and Kawashima were her friends. This words may feel nothing but irritation. There exists a type of extremely pedantic person who is destined to notice and correct every little inaccuracy, especially in the words of the people they talk to. Sometimes dry facts aren't what a situation requires. Intonations, hints, shades of meaning, intuition, and emotions are more important. Michael either couldn't understand or deliberately ignored it all. How many times have we had this conversation this week? I've lost count. But people have died. People die every day. Just don't say you don't give a damn. I do, but I'm not about to mourn them either. I barely knew them. Unlike you and Mara. Again. Just that moment the principal entered the class and announced right in the doorway. Police are working in our school at the moment. You'll be questioned one person at a time. Once your surname is called, please stand up calmly and walk out of the classroom without disturbing the lesson and go to my office. That will be all. Interrogation, interrogation, my classmates were whispering. I felt uncomfortable and tried my best to not show it to my friends. Like, you look a bit pale. Can't hide a cat in a bag, I guess. Anyone would feel uncomfortable about a police interrogation. If they have something to hide, now oh, screw you. I crossed my arms over my chest and turned away. This class started and my concern grew with every second. Yes, I had something to hide. Yesterday's conversation with Iwamoto at my place, for one. It was still too early for the police to suspect her. Still, I couldn't think of anyone else better suited to the role, no matter how hard I tried. Of course, eventually it was my turn. Pretty soon, too, my surname was right at the top of the list of names in our class. There were two policemen in the principal's office. The younger and taller one was obviously the bad cop, while his partner, an old fat round-faced lieutenant, was supposed to be the good one. In reality, it played out a little differently, with both taking turns asking me questions without much interest or emotion. Like lab technicians would question the 100th subject in an experiment analyzing how the length of the working day affects productivity. They were mostly asking about Asakura, her relationship with other students, and specifically inquired if she had any enemies. I answered honestly, and said if said we'd never really known each other personally. But the entire interrogation, I didn't know where to look, mostly staring unblinkingly at one detective or the other. My hands were suddenly several times heavier. I had to carefully fold them in front of me on the table and make a conscious effort to keep them from twitching. Then my back and buttocks became numb, straightened out unnaturally and froze in this position. The investigators still looked bored and didn't seem to, be pay, seem to pay any attention to my unnatural behavior. At the start of the conversation, the young one was making notes in his notebook, but soon enough he put it aside and absentmindedly looked at the bonsai tree on the principal's table. When the torture was over, I walked out of the office with a sense of relief. 